that the Cori cycle was revolutionary in um, demystifying and clarifying the role of lactate, suggesting that it's far from being metabolic garbage. In fact, it's substrate for energy. Now we go to the final individual who I want to bring up, which is George Brooks and his work at UCLA. I've met him. He's still alive. He's a wonderful guy, really, really remarkable in his contributions to bioenergetics and exercise science. George Brooks's contribution was that lactate itself is a viable energy source. And he proposed this as part of what he called the lactate shuttle theory. So George Brooks in his lab at UCLA demonstrated that lactate is not a waste product, but it has the ability to not only be exported from a cell and thereby contribute to the Cori cycle, but itself is a viable fuel all on the mitochondria. As much as we have taught and we've looked at non-oxidative glycolysis as coming down and stopping at lactate, then the lactate has to be dumped from the cell. That's not true. The mitochondria have lactate transporters. So mitochondria can pull in lactate um, and then pull in the lactate and then convert it to acetyl-CoA and send it into the citrate cycle or the Krebs cycle, getting all of this energy that we typically only think we're getting through oxidative glycolysis. So this is a huge paradigm shift. And I, I worry that in my description, I haven't adequately stated just how neat this is. So let me be clear. If you have a muscle cell that's creating lactate, yes, it can export it so the liver can turn it back into um, glucose through the Cori cycle. But even if it exports it, other cells that can take it up, including the liver, if it has, if those cells have mitochondria, every cell with mitochondria that I'm aware of is capable of pulling lactate into the mitochondria through specific transporters and burning that lactate for energy. So lactate once – so we've reached sort of the peak of this evolution. And in fact, there's even one more aspect of um, that I'll mention in a moment. But lactate went from being metabolic garbage to being good for being a substrate to rebuild glucose to now saying it's actually a viable energy source in its own right where mitochondria can pull lactate in and actually burn that lactate for energy even in the muscles that create it. Now, as much as I've been focusing on the muscle, I'll allow me to just go on a brief little tangent here. One of the first instances where I heard about the role and the benefit of lactate as an energy source was for traumatic brain injury. So it is very well known, um, and I'll have some links to some of these papers that I'm going to mention in a moment in the show notes, of course. But after a traumatic brain injury, one of the problems with the brain is that there is this disruption in the enzymes that the brain relies on to use glucose. In other words, glycolysis is compromised. Well, that's a problem if this is a brain that is primarily relying on glucose for energy. So again, part of the problem with a TBI or traumatic brain injury is that the brain starts to starve. So let's give the brain any fuel source we can. Of course, ketones are a very viable fuel source and are often used as part of the therapy for TBI, but so too is lactate. Lactate can serve as an alternate energy for the brain. It's, it allows the brain to bypass this now sluggish glucose metabolism, thereby helping it create adequate ATP. And that's important because the brain has a high metabolic rate. It is one of the trinity of so-called high metabolic rate organs being kidneys, heart, and brain, I think in that order. Uh, so the brain has a very high metabolic demand. And if the TBI is resulting in its glucose use being compromised, well, then all the more reason to give it something else. So again, commonly for TBI, lactate will be actually infused. And sure enough, there's evidence to show that if you infuse a lactate solution, it can reduce brain swelling and it can improve the intracranial pressure in patients with TBI. And this could be because you're allowing the brain to maintain sufficient energy. And with that energy comes the ability to sufficiently regulate um, electrolyte movement and then the water movement um, along with it. 